Today I'll be reflecting on my four-week independent project. Um, I wanted to learn how Raspberry Pis Raspberry Pis worked, so what I did was I set up a server on it. And what I wanted to learn was how to configure a server, learn how Raspberry Pis work, um, learn how to set up and use the operating system, which was Raspbian. And then I also want to learn how to install files on a Raspberry Pi. And where I got my supplies were was um, from Court. He gave me the Raspberry Pi. At first I was going to buy one, but he said I could just borrow his old one. And then Nate gave me a VGA to HDMI converter so that I could display my Raspberry Pi on the monitor. And then I had to get a micro SD card. Which at first, I didn't know the difference between an SD card and a micro SD card. So I bought an SD card and then it wouldn't fit. So I had to go back to the store and buy a micro SD, which it wasted time. And I wasn't able to do much the first week. Um, week two, that's when I actually got the SD card reader from Mrs. Dink and was able to download files onto the SD, micro SD card. And then I couldn't figure out which operating system to use. Then week three, I finally got the operating system, and I began to download the server files using the terminal on Raspbian. And then week four, I actually was able to join the server. And for my resources, I used Instructables and different YouTube videos. Um, for the YouTube videos, I had, a, I had to use YouTube videos when I had a couple problems. I couldn't figure out how to format the SD card, and I also couldn't figure out like which Raspbian to use and how to install it or which type of um, operating system. Cause there's different types of Raspbian like based on what you want to use and I couldn't figure out which one I was supposed to use so I had to watch some YouTube videos. Here is the difference between a micro SD card and a regular SD card. At first I bought this blue one and I was really confused like where it was supposed to go and then I realized that I had to get a micro SD card. So um, here's the Raspberry Pi. And it has a fancy case on it, but if you take the case off, it's, it's basically just a little mini computer. Um, this is a VGA to HDMI converter. So you plug the VGA, like, um, outlet, I guess, or cord into there, and it converts it into HDMI. Week two. This is when I first set up the Raspberry Pi, as you can see right here. That was a VGA converter, um, the monitor, and then that's the green thing, it's a micro SD card reader, and that's how I downloaded files onto the SD card. Week three, here's actually what Raspbian looks like. So it just it comes with this like background right here. It's just it's basically just like your MacBook desktop. It's just a simple computer desktop, but I did all the work in the terminal. The instructables that I used had code that I would type into it and it would download files for me that the server would like server files so that I could run it off the Raspberry Pi. Um, here's my setup for week three. I had a keyboard, a mouse, that's the desktop of Raspbian, that's the terminal. And then those were my instructables that I was reading. Week four, here's when I was preparing to launch the server. It says preparing spawn area, so it's basically just creating the world. And I had to wait for that to finish before I could join. And then right here you can say, see it says my name here, Grant, my username. And it says I logged in. And that's what popped up on the Raspberry Pi when I uh, joined using my Mac. And overall I learned how to configure Raspberry Pi I learned how to install software on a Raspberry Pi, and I learned how to burn files onto a micro SD card, how to use Raspbian, and how to edit files on a Raspberry Pi. And here's when I joined the server. This is like the final end product, I guess. So this is me on my MacBook Air playing Minecraft, and I connected to my Raspberry Pi. My Raspberry Pi was hosting the server. And right here is the IP of the Raspberry Pi. If you go into the settings on the Raspberry Pi, you can um, find the IP address, and that's just what I use to connect. Um, 
reflection on learning. So some things that went wrong, I didn't pay very close attention to the tutorials before I started. For example, I didn't know the difference between a micro SD card and a regular SD card. I didn't know I need a VGA converter for the monitor. Um, I didn't know which one was the correct operating system, so I had to mess around with that for a while. Uh, problem solving was very important. That's, I think that I got better at problem solving because it took a lot of it when I was working on this project. One thing that I like had to problem solve was I couldn't get the Raspberry Pi to display on the monitor. And it turns out you have to plug in the monitor or connect the Raspberry Pi to the monitor and then plug in the power to the Raspberry Pi for it to display. If you have the Raspberry Pi's power plugged in and then you plug in the monitor, it will just say um, no signal found. And there was nothing about that on the Instructables, so I just kind of had to mess around with that. And I couldn't figure out why it wasn't displaying, but I eventually found out that was the reason why. Um, another thing that went wrong, I didn't really have time to make my Raspberry Pi connectable by other IPs, so like other people could play on it. In order to play on the server, you would have to be on the same network, and I wanted to make it so that other, like people on other networks could play. And overall, the best part was joining the server. That was one of the highlights. So that's my four-week project.